where do you find peace when you're under attack? Welcome back to the Refresh a Summer in Psalms devotional. My name is Pastor Aaron Bublitz. I serve as pastor at Heritage Lutheran Church in Gilbert, Arizona, and it's my privilege to be spending time with you each weekday, June, July, and August, working our way through the Book of Psalms. Welcome to episode four. We are at Psalm five, where we hear where we find our peace and even our joy in this life when we're under attack. The psalm was written by David. Uh, maybe similarly, like we saw in Psalm three and four, uh, he's running from his enemies, he's, he's, he's a, being attacked, his life is in danger, uh, but we see where he turns. He turns to God and finds in him his peace and his joy, even in the midst of his earthly struggles. So we're encouraged to do that too as we take a look at this psalm together. Uh, there's really three parts of this psalm, so the way we'll do this today is I'll just read a part and talk about it read, you know, and, uh, instead of reading the whole thing right away. So uh, Psalm 5, these are the first two verses. David says, Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. So in his distress, in his trouble, David turns to the Lord, and he appeals that the Lord would listen to them and consider what he has to say, hear his cry for help. And notice he calls him three different things. He First he calls him Lord, and if you have your Bible open, uh, it is capital L-O-R-D. That is the covenant name of God, that, that God of free and faithful grace. It, it denotes his power, his, his love, his, his eternal nature. It is that name for I am, Lord. That is who he's crying out to. And then he calls him my king. Remember, David is the king, but he says, you are my king. I look to you. You are the one with all power and authority. And then he calls him God. God is that, that, that the name of, of power, uh, creator that name of the one who rules all things. This is the one to whom David prays. This is the one that you get to pray to, dear Christian, to the Lord, to your King, to your God. He says, come and bring your laments to me, bring your cries for help to me. He says also, in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. So you hear me, Lord. I lay those requests before you and knowing that the answers don't always come right away. Right? I wait expectantly. I lay them before you in the morning, and I know that you will answer them in your time and your way. And what a wonderful reminder for us, too, as we pray that God will answer. God will save us. God will rescue us in his time and his way and the way that is best for us, as he knows for us in his love. The second part of the psalm, then, is he appeals to God for those uh, against those who are seeking to Arm him to, to kill him to to take him down uh, the, his enemies and so we hear in this section uh, David make the make the very true statements that, that God hates sin and God hates those who do sin uh, and so God is opposed to all that is evil all that is all that is evil and wicked and so listen to as David continues to cry out to the Lord you are not a God who is pleased with wickedness with you evil people are not welcome the arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful you, Lord, detest. But I, by your great love, can come into your house and reverence I bow down toward your holy temple. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they tell lies. Declare them guilty, O God. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. So here in these verses, uh, verses uh, 4 through 10, David appeals to God's justice. He appeals to God's holiness to deal with his enemies, to punish them for their sins. And that, that might be a, a strange-sounding prayer to us, because aren't we supposed to love our enemies and forgive them and want God to show mercy to them? Oh, yes. But we also know that God is a God who is just, and he must punish sin because he is holy. And God's enemies are our enemies. And so those who, who seek to harm us, especially those spiritual enemies that are after us, the sinful world around us, uh, we want God to bring down his justice. Do we still proclaim the gospel and, and love and forgive? Yes, but yet 
we want God's holiness to reign because he has clothed us in his holiness. We are his people. We are in the image of him through Jesus Christ. We have been clothed in his righteousness, and that is who we are. And so we hate sin. We want nothing to do with sin. And we long for God to put an end to sin and all those who do sin and the, the wickedness and the evil that it brings into our lives. So I appeal to that, that difficult truth that God hates those who do wrong. Punish them according to your goodness. Banish them for their many sins, those who have rebelled against you. So at the same time as we pray for our enemies, as we long for them to repent, we also God will want God to, to carry out his justice in his holiness as his people. And then the psalm ends with this section. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. So he says, this is how it is with the wicked. This is how it is with those who are enemies, enemies of God, enemies of his people. But, he says, those who take refuge in you, let us be glad. Let us sing for joy. Spread your protection over us. Those who love your name may rejoice in you. Just think about how different that is. Those of us who are by God's grace, in his care, who know him, who believe in him, we have that promise that in the midst of struggle, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of being persecuted and, and uh, hunted by enemies, spiritual enemies that we have, our sinful flesh, the devil, this world, we can take refuge and be glad in him. We can have joy in the midst of all of that and sin. We can have peace as he spreads his protection over us in our Lord God. We are safe. Our king is there to answer our prayers and to keep us safe. And he says at the end, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favors with a shield. You've got a shield. You've got protection from all those enemies. The God who created all things, who redeemed you by the blood of Jesus, who continues to rule all things for the good of his church, which is you and I. There we find our refuge, our joy, our gladness in him, in him alone, no matter what. Let's pray. Lord God, our King, we cry to you and bring our laments before you as we struggle in this world, as we are hunted by enemies who seek to destroy our faith, who seek to lead us away from you, uh, who, say, who seek to take away our spiritual life. But in you we find protection, in you we find safety, for you are our shield, and there we find gladness and joy, no matter what. Lord, we desire our enemies to repent. We desire to, to love and forgive them. And may we come to know your peace and your joy too. But in the end, Lord, carry out your justice upon those who are wicked, those who do wickedness against you. You are holy, and you have made us holy in your sight through the blood of Jesus. And so we hate what you hate. We hate sin. And we want nothing to do with it. And in the end, we want you to, to eradicate it, to bring us safely to the eternal protection eternal joy and gladness that we have been to share with you forever and for eternal life. Until then, keep us safe. Protect us and shield us with your love and your, and your favor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great to be with you here again.